readers, welcome back to Reads with Room B. Um, this is a continuation of Alice in Wonderland, Chapter 2, Part 2. Alice had been to the seaside once in her life, and had come to the general conclusion that wherever you go in the English coast, you find a general number of bathing machines in the, in the sea, some children digging in the sand with wooden spades, and then a row of lodging houses and behind them a railway station. However, she soon made, a, made out that she was in a pool of tears when she had wept when she was nine feet high. I do wish I hadn't cried so much, said Alice, as she swam about trying to find her way out. I shall be punished for it now, I suppose, by being drowned in my own tears. That will be a queer thing, to be sure. However, everything is queer today. And just then, to make out what it was. At first, at first, she thought it must be a walrus or a hippopotamus, but then she remembered how small she was now, and she soon made out that it was only a mouth that had slipped in like herself. Would it be of any use now, thought Alice, to speak to this mouse? As everything is so out of the way down here, I think I hear that I should think it very likely can talk. At any rate, there's no harm in trying. So she began, Oh, Mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? I'm very tired of swimming about here. Oh, Mouse! And Alice thought this must be the right way of speaking to a mouse. She had never done such a thing before, but she remembered having seen in her brother's Latin, gra in her brother's Latin grammar a mouse, of a mouse, to a mouse, a mouse, O oh, Mouse. The mouse looked at her rather inquisitively, inquisitively and seemed to wink one of its one of its little eyes, but said nothing. Perhaps it doesn't understand English, thought Alice. I dare say it's the French mouse come over with William the Conqueror. For all her knowledge of history, Alice had no clear notion of how long ago anything had happened. So she began again. We is merchant, which was the first sentence in her French lesson book. The mouse gave a sudden leap out of the water and seemed to quiver all over. With fright. Oh, I do beg your pardon, cried Alice hastily, afraid she had hurt the poor, uh, uh, afraid that she had poor, hurt the poor animal's feelings. I quite forgot that you don't like cats. <laughs> Not like cats, cried the mouse in a shrill, pa passionate voice. Would you like cats if you were me? Well, perhaps not, said Alice in a, so in a soothing tone. Don't be angry about it, and yet I wish. I could, uh, I could show you our cat Dana, our cat Dinah. I think you'd take a fancy to cats if only you could see her. She is such a quiet dear thing, Alice went on half to herself as she swam lazily about the pool. She sits purring so nicely by the fire, licking her paws and washing her face, and she is such a nice soft thing to nurse. And she is such a capital one for catching mice. Oh. I beg your pardon, cried Alice again, but this time the mouse was bristling all over, and she felt certain she must really, uh, it really must be offended. We won't talk about her any more if you'd rather not. We, indeed, cried the mouse, who was trembling down to the end of his tail, as if I would talk on such a subject. Our family always hates cats, nasty, low, vulgar things. Don't let me hear the name again. I won't. Indeed, said Alice, and in a great hurry to change the subject of conversation. Are are you fond of dogs? The mouse did not answer, so Alice went on eagerly. There is such a little nice there is such a little a, a nice little dog near our house. I would like to show you. A bright eyed terrier. Oh you know, with oh such curly brown hair, and it'll fetch things when you throw them, and it'll sit up and beg for its dinner and all sorts. I can't remember half of them. 
it belongs to a farmer, you know. And he says it's use it's useful it, it's so useful its worth is a hundred pounds. He says it kills all the rats. Oh dear, cried Alice in such a sorrowful tone. I'm afraid I've offended it i am offended it again. For the mouse was swimming away from her as hard as it could go, making quite a commotion in the pool as it went. So she called after it softly. Dear Mouse, Mouse, do come back. We won't talk about cats or dogs either if you don't like them. When the mouse heard this, it turned and swam slowly back to her. Its face was quite pale. With passion, Alice thought. And it said in a low, trembling voice, Let us get to the shore, and then I shall tell you my history, and you'll understand why it is I hate cats and dogs. It was high time to go, for the pool was getting quite crowded with birds and animals that had fallen into it. There was a duck, and a dodo, and a lorry, an eaglet, and several other curious creatures. <laughs> Alice led the way, and the whole party swam to the shore. And that is the end of chapter 2.